we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. The topic of today is Arise, Shine. Talk to your neighbor, say neighbor. Have you risen up? Are you shining? What's the reply? Are you sure you are shining? Isaiah 60. I read from King James Version. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, thick darkness, dark darkness, very dark darkness, shall cover the cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. Say amen. Amen. Say a bigger amen. Amen. The topic is arise, shine. Why rise first before shining? Arise, shine. And this message went straight. Primary receivers of this message were the Israelites in bondage. And it was the time to return back to their homeland. So the messages in the later part of Isaiah, they are messages of hope, messages of comfort, messages of promises, God showing love, comforting his children because they had received from the Lord's hand double for their punishment. And the Lord here told them that it is time for you to arise, to go back to where you're supposed to be. And then in that land, you would shine forth I preached a message and a uh, topic in this effort uh, titled, Come. And I want to build on it. Come, meaning change your position, rise up from where you are, come to this place. This time around, it is arise, shine, arise and shine. The Bible does not paint things. The Bible is a book of truth. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way and the life. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? It will set you free. One truth about God is that God speaks the truth. He does not paint things. It's not like man that does not like to describe ugly situations. God, no matter what, we always tell you the plain truth. In this passage, God told them that arise and shine, for the light has come. The Lord has risen upon you. And in the place you are going to shine, there will be darkness in that place. There will be no light in that place. But because I am going to rise upon you, because the glory of the Lord will be risen upon you, Nothing will stop you from shining. And why? Because it is a time to shine. There is a time of the night and the time for day. I have never seen any time. According to the working and the creation of God, God of time, according to his own settings, I have never seen any day. 
whereby it is time for the morning to come and morning refused to come because the night was so powerful. I have never seen it. Have you seen it before? God said, your time to shine has come. And because it is now, as the children of Issachar, who understand the time they live in, it is time to rise up. Even though there is darkness, because I have written it, because it is your time, because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, you must surely shine. If we journey back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, we we'll discover that even God himself, before he started the work of creation, there was darkness upon the earth. Thick darkness upon the earth, but it never stopped God. God manifested his light. And in this Isaiah, the Lord is saying in verse 2, Isaiah 62, for behold, the darkness shall cover. It shall cover. That means now, as at when God was speaking, the darkness had not covered. He said, it shall. It shall. It's a future tense. It shall cover the earth. And gross darkness Thick darkness shall cover the people. So it is not just going to be on the earth, but even people, humans, shall face darkness. Like what the, uh, the prophecy about the Son of Man, that the people that dwell in darkness have seen a great light. So these people... They will be covered by this darkness. The darkness will come, thick darkness, gross darkness, and it will cover the land and also cover the people. If you look at it from the apocalyptic angle, when Jesus would come, there will be darkness. Uh, Jewish chapter 2, the moon shall be turned into blood. There will be darkness before the coming of the great day of the Lord. There will be darkness. But the primary message here to the people of Israel is that a time is coming when there will be darkness upon the earth, upon the land. Not this time around, not a physical darkness. The one of Jesus Christ returning is a physical darkness. But this time around, a spiritual darkness that shall cover the eyes of people. And it will control them. But because it is a time of God to show mercy to his people, because it is a time of God to rise, to cause his glory to shine upon his people, his people will be led by light. In fact, they will not just be led by light, they will be the shining stars themselves. If you look at the story of the creation, you discover that when God was to create, the Bible says that the earth was without form and it was void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. The darkness here symbolizes evil. There was a physical darkness. But it symbolizes evil, the presence of the evil one. What am I trying to say? For you to shine, it does not mean that God will have to kill all the enemies first. Remove all the evil first. No. There are times God will remove some evil persons. Selected evil men. But a lot of times, in the presence of your enemies... He would prepare a table for you, his child. Yeah. And as they are washing, your cup will be running over. Yeah. God did not kill all the Egyptians when he was to take them away, take his children away. He did not kill all of them in their presence. In fact, God caused them 
to give them their gold. There was a spiritual robbery. They gave their gold, their precious metal. Some of the things they donated for the, for the building of the, the ark. Some of the things they donated and Moses said it is enough. Some of those things were not their primary possessions. They came from the Egyptians who were oppressing them. That is how God works a lot of times. He causes even the darkness, the evil people around you to lift you up. It wasn't only the disciples of Jesus that were shouting Hosanna. It was not only the disciples. The Bible says that even the same people who shouted, there is a hymn writer, um, my love is, um, my love is love unknown, something like, my song is love unknown. If you look at the song very well, there is a verse that says, let me try to paraphrase, that they praised him as their king, not long after then, they shouted, crucify him. Even those who hated Jesus, they could not resist praising him. That is what I'm trying to say. Even his own enemies, apart from the officials of the Jewish church, they all praised him. But... When it was time for the crucifixion, when it was his time, they shouted, crucify him. They did not shout Hosanna at that moment. God stirred up praises in their hearts and they lifted Jesus up. That is how it is too. When Romans 8 says, all things work together for the good of those who love God, including the darkness. Why would God not remove the darkness before he allows his children to shine? Before he causes the light of his glory to come upon his children? It's because even the darkness is useful. Darkness is not useless. The darkness to God, it is useful still. In the presence of darkness... Light will show the magnitude of his lighting. If there is no darkness, light will not manifest his power. When you go home, in the middle of the day, switch on your light, even when your windows are open. Somebody may ask you, Daddy, why are you switching on the lights? Are you not seeing clearly? Because the sun had already taken care of the darkness in the earth. Except your room is dark. You don't need light in the day. For, we to, for us to value light, the way we're supposed to value it, there should be darkness first. If there is no darkness, light becomes useless. God also allows his children to shine in the midst of darkness so that he could reveal his awesome power. The man of God, Elijah, told the prophets of Baal and Asherot, he said, Dig a trench around this sacrifice and pour water. Pour water. What was he trying to do? He wanted to convince them beyond any form of doubt. He wanted to make the miracle more difficult to happen. He wanted to make the power of God visible to the eyes of all men. He said, pour water, and there will be no fire. In fact, if they had hidden any fire under it, underneath the sacrifice, the water would have quenched it. 
And by the time he called upon heaven, what he had made too impossible for man, even the water became fuel, kerosene, diesel, to God Almighty. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When God created the world, he created the knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden of Eden. He created two trees and he placed them in the middle of the garden. One, the tree of life. The other one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I have not read any passage in the Bible that says that tree represents Satan. But theologically, my own understanding after my meditation, is that God did not pretend about the presence of Satan in the world. God does not pretend. He speaks the truth the way it is. He created that tree. First of all, there was a symbol of the presence of Satan, which is the darkness in the world. I don't want to go into what brought the darkness and the chaotic situation in the world. Why there was water. We know there was war in heaven. When Satan was driven to the earth. When God was creating, God also had at the back of his mind that his enemy had come down to the earth. And he did not pretend while he was creating. He created a tree and tagged that tree. He called it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This one, don't touch it. Don't feed from it. I'm going somewhere. Is it a powerful? Eh? Apart from the power of Jesus, eh? apart from the power of Jesus that conquers the power of Satan, in a real sense, is Satan powerful? Yes. Is he powerful? Yes. yes, Satan is powerful. Is Satan wise? Yes. Is Satan wise? Yes. Can he deceive? Yes. Can Satan kill? Can he cause lightning and thunder to come from heaven? In the book of Job, it's correct. In the book of Job, did you think it was God that brought that wind? All those natural occurrences, natural disasters. It was Satan. God gave him the permission and he brought them. Satan can cause fire to fall from heaven and consume Satan can give children, but demonic children. Satan can give money, but if he gives you money, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 4, Satan told Jesus, after taking him up, he showed him all the world, the kingdoms of this world, and the glory of them all. And he told him, All these things had been given to me. And to whosoever I wish, I do what? I give them. Satan, Satan, he is not an empty beggar. He is not a poor, wretched beggar. When the Bible says that the serpent was the wisest among all the animals that God created, the Bible is true. But thanks be to God who has given us a victory through Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, Behold, I see Satan falling like lightning from heaven, which means he has lost his heavenly position his authority. He has fallen below man. He's a stranger here. He moves up and down, toe and fro. If he comes to your house, cast him out. If he goes to your business, cast him out. 
It doesn't belong to your family. But look at Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. We are talking about arise, shine. In the presence of that great enemy, the ancient serpent, the dragon. Okay, let's take uh, chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. In the presence of who? In the presence of who? In the presence of Satan. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion, power, authority over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, including Satan. Is Satan a living thing? Eh? He is a spiritual living being. It's a living thing. So he is classified among the things which you exercise authority over. That is why I said, if he comes to your house, do what? Cast him out. He's a stranger. Arise, shine. For your light has come today. Today, not tomorrow, your light has arrived. It's my prayer that God will open the hearts of our understanding. Open the minds of our understanding. So that we can see our position and live here shining. Arise, church. It's time to arise. God did not create the world for sleeping and waking. Me, I have one belief. And the belief is scriptural. My belief is that Jesus Christ, through whom the whole earth and everything was made, is the end and the beginning, is the Alpha and Omega. He knows he is the all-wise God. He is the embodiment of the secret of darkness. He knows everything, even before they happen. And I tell us today that even God himself knew that Satan would tempt man. God knew. Why? Is it that many have refused to rise up even when their time has come? Some refuse to stand up and rise up even when the Lord is saying, Your time is now. Rise up and walk. Some refuse to stand up. You can't shine except you rise first. And the first rising up is in your mind. If you have not risen up in your mind, you will never rise up. If your faith is not awoken first, your body will never wake up. Your faith first. A lot of people have refused to stand up. The children of Israel, when they saw the war, when they saw the battle, in fact, the spies, when they got to the land, they saw, they came back with three reports. Three reports. The first one is that we have viewed the land. And the land, the word of God is true. The land is very fruitful. Moses, you told us that the land is flowing with milk and honey. It is the truth. It is flowing with milk and honey. In fact, we decided to bring some fruits of the land as evidence. Second report. They said, but the people that live there, they live in fenced cities. 
They are well secured. They have organized army. That's the second report. The third report. You know, even when your teacher is teaching you, if your teacher is teaching you, you will be doing mathematics in your mind too. As they are teaching you, you have your own conclusion. From what they saw, they came out with a result. That was a third and the final report. They said, we saw ourselves when we scaled the heights of the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, we now discover in our own eyes that we are just like grasshoppers before them. Grasshoppers! And they said, let's tear up the people. Let's go back to Egypt. These are the very people that saw the Red Sea dried up before them and they walked on dry ground. And the Egyptian army perished in that same sea. They saw physical fences, armies, fence cities, and they said, let us go back. You want to leave the land that God had promised to Abraham. No wonder all of them perished, except Joshua and Caleb. All of them, they perished. They did not get to the promised land. God said, this your children, you said, will be taken as captives and that they will die by the sword. They are the ones that will inherit the land. And you yourselves, none of you will see the promised land. It is because they refuse to rise up. They refuse. There are times you stand up for your rights. If you have built a family with your partner, you have raised children, or whether there are children or not, you have suffered with this man. You have suffered with this woman. And somebody is coming to intrude. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how you should react. Go to the zoo. Look for a lion that has cubs. Small children. Look for a way to get there and collect the cups of the lion. Any reaction you get from the lion, you should react like that. If you don't know where you can find a zoo, I will give you one address. That one is too heavy. Go to the village. You know all this local hen, local fowl. The one that just hash, go and collect one of the sheep. The hen knows that it cannot kill you, eh? But it will pursue you. It will fight you. Some of you, you just see your husband on a latest message. You are looking for your marriage certificate to go for divorce. It means you were never prepared for the marriage. Especially now that people say for better. For what? It is we that are still using words for better for. Say it where well, I don't want to say it with my mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like that. Don't be deceived though. It is for better for worse. For better for worse. If God has given you children and somebody is crossing your way, roar like a lion and said, no, not my children. No way, not my children. When I don't sleep in the night, I try all my best to put food on the table for them, struggle to pay their school fees. Now they have a job. You don't want my children to visit me. When I was taking care of my children, I was not a witch. When I was going to a good market, I was not a witch. Where were you? It is now you have your prophecy. I did not kill my children. When I was breastfeeding them, when they had measles, I did not consider my health. 
I carry them without immunizing myself. Without the fear of being infected. That time I did not kill them. It is now I have become a witch and a wizard. To kill my children. Now that they pay my rent. Roar like a lion. If you know your hands are clean. Because I know some people's hands are not clean. If you know your hands are clean. Roar like a lion and refuse to give up. If it is time for you to tie seagull. If it is time for you to tie clean booba, not the ones you cannot iron. Want to iron it is stubborn because it is not old, it's not tired. You put water iron and you know the green. He said, throw away me. You say, no, money, no day. I'm not going to go naked. Not that type of booba. When you buy a new cloth, if you put iron, it will respect itself. And respect the money you use in buying it. But when you have overused it, it will disobey you. Not this time that you want to reap. Somebody is coming to come and scatter your marriage. Say no, no. No, no. Somebody say no. Scream and say no. Before you can shine, Apart from rising up in your mind, you have to make Jesus your savior. I was playing, I have one record. I play every time. And the man was saying, I will not die before my time. Nobody will bury me. But I now discovered that the man, a few days ago I went to Facebook, somebody wrote three years memorial that the man had died three years ago. Though he was professing his faith with his mouth, he never lived like that. He used to smoke. He may have repented before he died. But he used to smoke and drink alcohol. Even though he was boasting, you have to be in Christ. And when you are speaking, God will be saying, yes, this is my daughter, this is my son. John chapter 15, verse 5 says, Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you cannot shine. Have Jesus by your side. A lot of us are just churchgoers. We don't have Jesus. It is a gross sin for a believer, a carrier of Jesus Christ, not to sleep at night. It is a sin. Because enemies are pressing you. They are pressing you. You can't sleep in the night. Because masquerades are pursuing you. It is a sin and insult upon the name of the God you carry. That you could be shouting. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And the, the woman, the idol worshiper will be the one to ask you what is happening. You say, hey, they are pressing me. Witches are pressing me. So what do you want the woman to do? She will give you a native shock and preach to you to come to her because she is sleeping well. These things don't happen except we sell our rights. They don't happen. They don't happen except you have sold your rights. If you are not shining, it is not because Satan is in the world. No. Psalm 23 says, my God will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and my cup will run over. It is not because your enemies, your family, they are very strong. No! It is because you have failed. Revelation 3, verse 7 and 8. Revelation 3. Seven and eight should round off. He said, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that openeth, and no man can shut. 
can shut it and no man can open. I know thy works. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut. God has opened a door for you to go through and child. And no human being can shut this door except you. It was not the Philistine that killed Samson. It wasn't Delilah. According to the creation and the design of God, no human being could kill Samson. He killed himself. The door God opened for him, he shut the door with his own hands. I've met a lot of people. There was a man who used to smoke. And one prophetess told him, stop smoking. This your company will give you a car. I saw you in a revelation and anytime they want to give you a car, the smoke will be coming. So when they see you, they say, no, this one that smokes. So the man stopped smoking. He was my landlord. They gave him a car. And the same person met him and told him, please don't smoke cigarettes. They will take this car from you. So he will be hiding to smoke. And they took the car from him. I'm not sure he has a car today. I have summarized the problems of man. They are self-made and man-made. If you do not reduce yourself, no witch will jump on top of you. If you carry Jesus Christ, especially we that take Holy Communion, and witches are still pressing you, you drink the blood of Christ, you cannot shine. In the night you can't sleep. Something is wrong. Not with God. Not with Satan. Because Satan is already doing his work. But with you. Rise up. We need to shine. You were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website. www.hosannadavid.com Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.